All right, everyone, here we are. We're gonna do a walkthrough of Darcy's formula sheet, okay? Now, this formula sheet sometimes are pretty bad that she gives you. This one, however, seems to be pretty good. It doesn't seem to have any crazy issues with it. That's a good thing. This stuff up here, I'm not so sure it's on your test. It used to be a long, long time ago, so maybe it's still there, but as it defined, an observational experiment, observing something, designed experiment, statistician controls the data of the experiment. Um, they're not defined too horribly bad. If anything, this is just a quick theory question on a test. Over the last years, no one's told me anything about it, so it could be there. It might not be. It might be easy. It might just be able to read that. Okay, now we got random variables. There's a definition of random variable. And then we got discrete and continuous. I don't like these definitions. I gave you better ones in the review. And then down here we start using these equations. These equations are necessary unless you have the right calculator. Quite a few of the TI-30s will do those. It's about the only benefit from the TI, certain models of the TI-30s is they will do this. Okay. In general, when I'm getting a calculator for this class, I would get one with a big screen, for example. And you can't have this one. This is just an example. This is the TI-36, okay? Now, the good thing about the TI-36, it has a really big screen on it. So if I go in here and start typing fractions, I'm okay. Yeah, you can't type that in a TI-30, so they don't allow these. But there are some TI-30s with the same screen. So I would go for one of those because we're going to type some pretty bad equations in there on test three. All right, so having said that, now we're going to need to move the sheet because I'm keeping the camera in pretty tight so we can see what's going on. Okay, and this next section right here is talking about a binomial, a Bernoulli trial. It's called Bernoulli because the Bernoulli family came up with this, but most of the rest of the world calls it a binomial trial, a binomial experiment, and it's listed right there. Okay, she gives the three conditions, the three common conditions right here for a binomial, but they're not spelled out very clearly. I like, uh, you have a success or failure, you have fixed number of trials, the probability is constant, and the trials are independent. Those are the four, she has three out of the four. She doesn't have two outcomes. She does have two outcomes up here, but it should be one of the conditions. And this is what I'm, why I don't like her formula sheets. They can be random like that. Okay, down here she gives the equations for them, the mean and standard deviation. You're definitely, you should use on the test somewhere. Okay, this version of it, I would not expect you to use, but this version you might. Okay, again, most of the TI-30s will do this part right here. If you know how to do it, it's called a combination. It usually looks like this on the calculator screen. So most of the TI-30s will do this part of this, making this equation a lot easier to deal with. And here she has the Excel command. Excel command, that was a hint, okay? And then she starts talking about decision analysis. Right below it, she talks about the news vendor problem. The news vendor problem is a problem in her textbook, okay? So I'd make sure you read the last problems in every chapter in her textbook. So let's turn the page. Let me get it lined up and get this extra copy out of the way. I brought extra copies just so I could be prepared. All right, now looking at this, we have what B and C are in this formula, B over B plus C, okay? Now this represents an area in a continuous distribution. Now down here she starts talking about continuous distributions and probability density function. Okay, properties of probability density function, f of x is greater than or equal to zero. In other words, it can never be negative and the normal distribution bypasses that, which is fun. Anyhow, the area under a curve is one and you would define probabilities you use areas. That's what that says. Okay, and she's telling you the equal sign makes no difference here. On the discrete, she doesn't tell you that, but on the discrete, the equal sign makes a difference. Here's the equations for the uniform. You should need those on your test. Here's the equation for the normal. There's no way you need that with the tables, okay? 
and this right here are the inputs for the normal distribution because you use Z to find it which is right here okay so you Z to find it and the inputs for it are in that box okay normal transformation yeah Z allows you to turn any uh, normally distributed variable into a standard normal variable and there's the two equations for Z you will need both of those on a test okay and when you get down here she re revisits the news vendor problem which means you're probably gonna get that on the test if it's on here twice okay and then she gives the Excel command down at the bottom organization wise she could have organized this a little better she could have put the news vendor problem all together in one spot instead of splitting it okay what she's trying to say is up here it's discrete down here up at the top it's discrete down at the bottom it's continuous okay but overall that isn't really an issue and again it's not organized too badly because she does keep the discrete ones together the continuous ones together that's something she won't continue to do on later test all right i hope this some of you find this helpful and worth your time to look at it i try to keep it short because there isn't a lot there and have a good day